How are you? I'm glad to meet you. Today's topic is the Israelites started Exodus from Egypt. May God bless you abundantly. Moses calls for the great Exodus, Exodus chapter 3 verse 1, 1446 BC, 636th year of the covenant of the torch. Thutmose the third, the ruthless pharaoh of Egypt who wanted to kill Moses, died, Exodus chapter 2 verse 23. After his death, Amenhotep II, 1450 BC, succeeded the throne. This indicates that the time of the Exodus, which God had promised to Abraham through the covenant of the flaming torch, had arrived. God called Moses at Mount Horeb. By that time, he had been trained in the wilderness of Midian for 40 years. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1, Acts chapter 7 verse 30. What kind of place is Mount Horeb? Mount Horeb is a completely dry, parched mountain. The bush in Exodus chapter 3 verse 2 refers to a thorn bush, a short shrub that grows in such dry areas. This unsightly, stripped bush mirrored the withered Israelites who had been driven to Egypt and forced into a miserable life of bondage, slavery, and affliction for 400 years. Exodus chapter 1 verse 12 the flaming thorn bush represented the Israelites who were in the midst of fiery suffering in Egypt as though they were in a furnace. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 20, 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 51, Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 4. The fact that the bush was on fire but not consumed reveals that although the Israelites were in midst of great suffering, they did not perish. This event signaled that the time had come for God to deliver them from Egypt just as he had promised Abraham through the covenant of the torch. Especially, the appearance of an angel of the Lord in the flame of a burning thorn bush was God's clear revelation that he had heard the groaning of his people and would deliver them. Acts chapter 7 verse 30 With this revelation, the, exodus the great of the Israelites exodus was finally 1446 unfold. BC. 636th year of the covenant of the torch, Moses is age 80. Exodus chapter 2 verse 23 Now it came about in the course of those many days that the king of Egypt died. And the sons of Israel sighed because of the bondage, and they cried out. And their cry for help because of their bondage rose up to God. So God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God saw the sons of Israel, and God took notice of them. On the fifteenth day of the first month of the year 1446 BC, the Israelites finally were released from slavery in Egypt and embarked on the Exodus to enter the Promised Land, Exodus chapter 12, Numbers chapter 33 verse 3. If only the young men are counted. The people who came out of Egypt numbered 603,550. Exodus chapter 38 verse 26. Numbers chapter 1 verse 46. If the children, women, and elderly are included, there were over 2 million people. It was a mass migration of a nation. The fullness of time had come, and God was fulfilling the covenant of the torch, which he had made with Abraham 636 years earlier. He acknowledged Israel and delivered them out of Egypt. God's Remembrance and the Exodus, Exodus chapter 2 verse 23. What made the Exodus possible was, above all, the fact that God saw and acknowledged Israel. Exodus chapter 2 verse 25 states, God looked upon the children of Israel, and God acknowledged them. The Hebrew verbs in this sentence are ra and yada. The verb ra means to see, closely, and yada means to know, by experience. Thus, God had been seeing, hearing, and acknowledging all of the excruciating reality of the Israelites' oppression in Egypt. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. God, who is faithful in his covenants, remembered the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and looked upon and acknowledged the children of Israel, Exodus chapter 2 verse 23. Genesis 15 14, Psalms 105 to 8. God's act of seeing and acknowledging the plight of the Israelites was indeed what Joseph had prophesied about 360 years ago, the act of visitation, 
Genesis chapter 50 verse 24. In a similar context as in, see and acknowledge, the word visit, take care, pakod, means to look after, to go to anyone. Especially in Genesis chapter 50 verse 24 and Genesis chapter 50 verse 25. The phrase, surely visit you, or, surely take care of you, is, pakod yipkod, an infinitive absolute construction that repeats the verb for emphasis. It means that God will visit. And he is sure to visit. Certainly, God's visit and care, also as mentioned above, his act of seeing, and, acknowledging, was the fundamental driving force of the Exodus. The chosen people leave Egypt in martial array. Exodus chapter 13 verse 18. Hence God led the people around by the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. And the sons of Israel went up in martial array from the land of Egypt. Numbers chapter 33 verse 1. These are the journeys of the sons of Israel, by which they came out from the land of Egypt by their armies. Under the leadership of Moses and Aaron, the Israelites came out of Egypt in martial array. This martial array conjures up images of rank and file formation. Thus indicating that when the Israelites came out of Egypt, they did not crowd and flee in chaos as if they were a mob of escaping slaves. Instead, they marched out in orderly ranks. They were not fugitives, but rather an army of God that believed in God's promise and marched out with dignity. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 12 But you will not go out in haste, nor will you go as fugitives. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. This was a display of dignity and boldness resulting from God's grace. Exodus chapter 14 verse 8. The Bible refers to the Israelites in martial array as the armies of the Lord. Exodus chapter 12 verse 41, and states. Bring out the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt according to their armies. Exodus 6:26. God also called Israel, my armies and my people, the children of Israel, Exodus 7-4. When the Israelites marched out of Egypt in martial array, God had the Israelites bring out great wealth along with them, Exodus chapter 3 verses 21-22. The Israelites openly requested great wealth like a victorious army plundering the spoils, they took all that the Egyptians gave and marched out. When the Israelites requested articles of silver, gold, and clothing from the Egyptians, the Egyptians gave up their possessions without another thought, hoping that the Israelites would leave quickly. For they were terrified that even greater plagues might strike them. Indeed, it was a miraculous work in which the Lord gave the Israelites favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they seemed exceedingly great. Exodus chapter 12 verses 35 to 36. Thus, Numbers chapter 33 verse 3 says. The sons of Israel started out boldly in the sight of all the Egyptians. The slaves who were oppressed under unspeakable humiliation, sorrow and contempt for four hundred years were now marching with dignity like the armies lined up in ranks and files. The moment that the Egyptians saw the army, they could not help but be completely overwhelmed. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 13. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you should not be their slaves. And I broke the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. This was a fulfillment of the covenant of the torch which God had formerly entered with Abraham. And afterward they will come out with many possessions, Genesis chapter 15 verse 14. Moses carries Joseph's bones out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 13 verse 19. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children under solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. Just as Joseph willed through his last words, Genesis chapter 50 verse 25, Moses took Joseph's bones with him during the Exodus. This was the moment of fulfillment, 
360 years after Joseph gave the command to take his bones with them from Egypt. Moses taking the bones of Joseph himself was more than just a commitment to carry out Joseph's request. It was a result of his own faith and his sense of duty regarding the fulfillment of the covenant. Moses understood that the Exodus was not a mere emancipation from slavery, but the profound historical event of fulfilling the covenant of the torch, which God entered with Abraham in the divine administration of the redemptive history. Hence, Moses did not forget to take Joseph's bones. Joseph's bones had been preserved as a mummy. In Genesis chapter 50 verse 26 the Hebrew word for coffin is Aaron, meaning chest, ark. In those days in Egypt, a chest, coffin, used to keep mummies was usually made of long-lasting sycamore wood, tall maple tree or sycamore figs. Sycamore wood was a very suitable material for the coffins of mummies. 3,000 years ago because it is smooth yet very durable and resists humidity and decomposition. Since Joseph was a high official, it is presumed that the inside of his coffin was made of non-decaying sycamore wood, and its outside was layered with stone covering, sarcophagus. According to the Egyptian funeral customs in those days, even without the sarcophagus, Joseph's coffin probably weighed a lot requiring many people to carry it with extreme care. The Encyclopedia Judaica states, During the forty years wandering in the wilderness the coffin was carried next to the Ark of the Covenant. The Israelites embarked alongside Moses during the Great Exodus by carrying the coffin of Joseph. This was a reminder that the Israelites were completely saved from the slavery in Egypt just as Joseph prophesied and the historical moment when the covenant of the torch that God had made with Abraham was being fulfilled. This concludes today's message. Thank you very much. God bless you. I wish you have a good day.